What's up everybody, it's Stas here and in this video we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November heading into the third week of this month in 2019 and as you guys read in the title we're also going to be talking about natural gas because it did gap down here about 1 or 2 percent I believe 4 cents it gapped down so we'll talk about that breakdown you guys and D gas and of course a bunch of other stocks and ETFs. So all I ask from you is if you enjoy this video, if you find value in the video, just simply go down below, hit that like button, and consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and also consider joining our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group. All of those are linked down below. So without further ado, let's kind of talk about in under a minute what happened last week with the S&P, then we'll look at the S&P the Dow and the NASDAQ futures to kind of get an understanding of what the market could be doing tomorrow and then we'll hop into you guys and natural gas. So going to the five day five minute here on the SPX, you can see that it was a very bullish week especially on Friday with this very bullish uh, close that we saw, right? And let me explain kind of what happened here uh, you know, on the five day five minute which really depicts what happened last week, the previous five trading days um, in the stock market, right? So we were pretty much kind of um, trading between 3083 to about 3100, which if we zoom out a bit, you can see on the hourly chart, um, you know, that was kind of a, a level of support, right? It was an old resistance and we were kind of trading under that level of resistance, or rather this was a support at 3830, uh, right? Or rather 3083 and the resistance was at about um, 3100 again, right? And we were trading in this horizontal channel for the couple of days, uh, really for a lot of last week. And once we got that that break out of that 3100 level, we ultimately broke um, that all time high, and that was extremely extremely bullish um, for the S and P. Which, in my opinion, on a technical basis here, um, you know, is, is why it ran up so aggressively on Friday because that momentum, you know, the break of that 3100 level, uh, that momentum was heavily to the upside. So that's kind of what happened in the past five days. Very, very bullish close here on Friday. So now if we look over to the futures to see what they're looking like right now, the ES, the E-mini S&P 500 futures, they're down about 0.01%, down about three bucks right now. And honestly, guys, that doesn't surprise me at all because again, on Friday, we had a very good day in the markets, up almost 1% across the three major indexes. That massive bull run towards the end of the market um, in power hour. So a little bit of a pullback right now in terms of the futures, it makes sense, right? I wouldn't even be surprised, honestly, if we pulled down uh, maybe... 0.3%, 0.4% before ultimately continuing the uptrend and hitting new highs. So right now, a little bit of a pullback, nothing crazy. Of course, I'm keeping an eye on these heading into the morning and, you know, pre-market tomorrow and looking at large caps as well. Very important to kind of see where the market could be going for that day. The NASDAQ right now down about six bucks, down about 0.07%. And again, it doesn't surprise me due to the big push that we saw on Friday. Friday and the Dow Jones right now guys down about nine points here down 0.03 percent which for the Dow that's really nothing guys so watch what these do tomorrow if we pull down expect a potential support um, you know on these 50 day SMAs here on the four hour chart across all the indexes that's where we could potentially find support and continue the uptrend from here so let's break down natural gas very quickly you gas D gas and then we'll start uh, really and talk about other ones that I'm watching heading into this week particular. So natural gas, let's pull up the chart and we'll see exactly what I'm talking about now um, in terms of the gap up. And I'm personally using um, the January futures right now. 
and we can see that four cent gap down that I was talking about down about 1.56 percent so if we dig in a little bit more here on the 20 day one hour chart you guys can see on a technical basis this kind of makes sense and if you guys recall I don't know probably no one remembers this maybe a handful of you guys remember this but if you recall about a week or two ago when I was doing my analysis on natural gas I was talking about how a potential head and shoulders pattern was forming and now the fact that we got rejected by that 180 SMA here on the hourly chart due to this massive gap down that kind of confirms the rejection that head and shoulders theory is kind of playing out here and let me explain what that means so on this hourly chart and I'm sure if you guys pull it up on your screen you'll be able to see it for yourselves right you see the head and shoulder pattern very clearly the left shoulders right here you know we ran from 250 up to 280 sold off to 270 that was the formation of the left shoulder we ran all the way up nearly to three dollars on natural gas ultimately selling off all the way back down to that 270 level where we uh, sold off the previous time so that actually made the head of the pattern now guys we are kind of rallying again we saw a bit of a rally from this low 270 up to about 280 and with the gap down that we just saw about an hour and 12 minutes ago that's bringing us down here where we could potentially see a further sell-off in the short term that is which would really complete that right shoulder on natural gas right and this really depends on um, in my opinion what the natural gas inventory report is going to look like on Thursday at 10 30 a.m. Eastern Standard and last week go check out my video I believe it was two videos ago where I broke down the natural gas report last week we saw an injection I believe of 3 billion cubic feet of natural gas and that really saw the, the uh, a decrease in natural gas really throughout the rest of that day and into Friday and obviously now into right uh, right now right since the futures just opened so if we look at you know you gas and de gas very quickly now the natural gas gap down I expect you gas obviously um, to open up down tomorrow if we look on a percentage basis you know natural gas was down about 1.5 percent that means you gas should be down roughly um, I'd say uh, what would that math be? About four to five percent because it does go three times whatever uh, natural gas um, goes up, right? Which, which makes sense. So, you know, down about four or five percent for you guys tomorrow that's probably what we'll be looking like um, for that and at this point you know D gas might honestly be the better play which is an inverse to you guys obviously a lot of you guys know it and if we go on this hourly chart we can see here that this is looking quite bullish right we can see that we're breaking out of moving averages the 50 the 180 SMA you know these were once resistance levels now they're acting as support levels and with this drop in natural gas you know D gas which goes up whenever natural gas is selling off that's going to be a nice gap up pre-market for D gas you know if if natural gas holds right now um, of about you know maybe four or five upwards of six percent right so this thing could be breaking out to the upside tomorrow and honestly maybe for the rest of this week due to that again injection that we saw last week on Thursday um, of the, at the natural gas inventory reports so you know D gas might be the play over the next couple of days I'm thinking but once we get a very bullish report meaning we get a lot of withdrawals of natural gas you know across the United States I think you know that's ultimately going to pop up the price of natural gas and that's when you guys is going to be more of the play but that might not happen here until then uh, you know uh, maybe for the next one two three weeks so again that's why I'm reiterating my point D gas might be the play in the short term here maybe one two weeks but then after that uh, maybe in one two probably two three weeks from now that's when you guys might have the higher advantage um, and who knows that that might happen this Thursday's report you know this Thursday's report may be extremely bullish and then you guys might fly up so we kind of just have to play it by ear right now but again in the short term I'm talking two three days uh, maybe upwards to a week depending on that on what that report says I think D gas might be um, 
you know, excuse me, guys, the uh, the better play here. So that's kind of the breakdown. Of course, if we go back to natural gas, um, some critical levels that I'm watching in terms of, uh, you know, supports and resistances, watch 270, you know, watch 265. That's a level that we were at a couple of days ago um, in terms of this hourly chart. If we break that 180 SMA, guys, let's say we get that good report, you know, bullish report, we get that break above the 180 SMA, um, and ultimately a break back into 280, 285, that's going to be extremely bullish. And from there, again, like I mentioned, you guys will probably be the better play, uh, but we have to wait until that happens. So let me know what you guys think about natural gas, you guys, D gas, all of that good stuff. And let's just get right into it in terms of individual stocks that I'm watching because guys, to be honest, there's a lot of them. And I don't know if I could fit all of them um, in this video. So we kind of have to rapid fire through these not rushing, but a bit quicker um, than normal. So the first one's going to be PayPal, right? I've been talking about PayPal um, a lot. And just right off the bat, you know, on the hourly chart, we're getting a breakout, right? We're getting a breakout. Um, we held 100 very nicely. Moving averages were acting as resistances, right? We've broken above the 50 SMA, and now on Friday, um, and really on Thursday as well, we got two bullish movements of, you know, we broke breaking above the 180 SMA, and then pulling down and holding that level as a new support at a higher low, and then ultimately closing the day very strong on Friday. So that's looking attractive if we're looking on the hourly chart. Right on the five day chart, five day, five minute, it's looking extremely attractive as well. Um, honestly, this is what we want to see as swing traders higher highs, higher lows. And honestly, guys, this stock in PayPal, this stock has been battered down over the past couple um, of weeks. Honestly, it's been a couple of months at this point, ever since the middle towards the end of July. We kind of found a peak at about 120 bucks, sold off all the way to 94, had a solid earnings report, beat on revenue and EPS, I'm pretty positive, right? I'm, if I'm, if I remember correctly, you know, very good earnings report. Honestly, a lot of the payment um, um, companies did well. Visa had a great earnings report as well. And you can see the stock saw a nice upwards push from there, 94 bucks all the way up to about 108 bucks. We sold off to 100 bucks. And once I started to see that hold at 100, which is where we kind of bottomed off um, about a month or two ago, that's where I wanted to enter. Again, earnings report was solid. So this was a good catalyst in my favor as a swing trade. We started to run up. The technicals started to look good, right? Again, confirming that bounce at 100 bucks. And that's kind of where I've started to buy in. And by the way, yes, I'm already in PayPal. And I plan on adding more money. And one thing I'm loving right now that we're doing is we're breaking those moving averages on the four hour chart. And the four hour chart as a swing trader is what I like to focus on. Um, the most. And of course, I'm looking at other chart time frames, but as a swing trader, mostly um, I'm looking at uh, the four hour chart. Then I love looking at the hourly, the five day, five minute um, and the one day, one minute. But looking at this, ultimately, this is what we want to see a break up to 107 and ultimately a break out of 108 and then a pop to 110. I talked about in my previous video how on PayPal, uh, my average cost right now might be in the 102s. I forget exactly off, off the top of my head, but I'm looking to start selling at 110, looking to start selling more at 114, then ultimately getting out of the position at about $117. So PayPal, those are my thoughts there. Shopify is another stock that's kind of in the same position as PayPal. You know, we've sold off, um, you know, down from about 409 down to about 300 bucks on Shopify. And this sell off, it's, uh, you know, it, it justifies what happened in terms of their earnings report. It makes sense why Shopify is selling off right now. If you can see here at this little negative um, 29 cent number, they actually reported a loss in terms of EPS in their previous earnings report. And analysts were expecting 11 cents sense of EPS. And whenever a company misses, um, especially that badly, right? 11 cents is what the analysts were expecting. 29 cents in the red is what they reported. You know, when that happens, the stock typically doesn't respond well, um, which again, justifies the prices action here uh, because we, we fell after that report down all the way to about 280, which we held, which is a good sign, um, which is a support from back towards the end of June. And ever since there, guys, we've been 
running up. And why is it similar to PayPal? Because PayPal, if we go back, you can see it's on the verge of breaking out of the downwards pattern that it's been on. And Shopify is very much uh, like like PayPal in that sense, right? It's on the verge of breaking out of these moving averages. All we need to see, guys, is that breakout, then ultimately a break above old resistances, which if we just draw them out very quickly on this chart, they're going to be at around um, 322. Watch that level, you know, 345. And, and, you know, as we get closer and closer to those levels, mid 350s, I have, you know, no doubt in my mind that Shopify should be going back up to at least the high 300s, maybe even 400s again, because stocks like this, guys, you know, although they report a bad earnings report, maybe in a week or two, investors, traders forget about that. They get hot again, the stock in terms of, you know, a technical breakout, whatever it may be then all of a sudden money's flooding in again then poof it's back to 400 right stuff like that happens all the time and that's kind of what I'm waiting for here um, with Shopify especially if the market in general stays hot here guys you know if the S&P continues to hit all-time highs over the next couple of months you know obviously we'll probably uh, you know see a correction but overall if the market is generally pushing up higher and higher month after month um, Shopify should do well here in my personal opinion so so let me pull up my phone, uh, my notes app. I have the handy dandy notes app here, guys, to talk about these different tickers. PG is a stock that a lot of people have been asking me about, and rightfully so, because PG has been very quiet recently, but it's slowly making this comeback, which I think this week could be the week it honestly breaks out. And uh, when I take a position, to be quite honest with you all, because again, swing traders, they like to look at four hour charts. I'm mostly a swing trader, right? I do a bunch of day trading as well, but I'm mostly focusing on swings like PG and a bunch of the other ones that I'm in. And what I like to see is an overall uptrend on the four hour and the price action showing me here, guys, although there is a bunch of mumbo jumbo the price action is showing me um a higher low right here and quite honestly it's holding the trend line that we've that we've drawn across the chart here on the four hour chart so that's really attractive right now if we zoom in a bit to the 20 day chart we can see it even better we've been slowly climbing up from this 118 bottom you know we've been making higher lows higher highs but very subtly and very slowly which is why i said about a minute ago this has kind of been moving under the radar. Now I want to see if we go to that five day, five minute chart. This is quite bullish in my opinion, guys. This could end up gapping out and breaking up here to the 121s, 122s, right? If that happens, going back to that hourly chart, that's going to be the breakout above that 180 SMA we want to see for that entry point. And then going back to the four hour chart, that's going to be ultimately where we're breaking into the 12150s, this resistance here, moving averages, uh, the whole nine yards. So I'm looking to enter pay, uh, I was about to say PayPal, guys. PG, Procter & Gamble, I'm looking to enter here. Um, 122 most likely is the, uh, the, the the limit order I'm going to put if it's looking good in the morning. And PG is one of those stocks, guys, that they report earnings, they, they, they kind of fiddle around a little bit, then ultimately they find their way up, right? So PG, they reported earnings. They, their earnings were good a couple of weeks ago. You know, we ran up, sold off. So I'm looking to see if this thing catches steam again. And uh, I really do think... It will. So a couple more here. Qualcomm, they crushed earnings, guys. Um, you know, crushed earnings, absolutely crushed them, right? We ran up above that 50 SMA this past Friday. And after earnings, you can see the stock ran up from 84 up to 94. We pulled down after earnings. And this is where I saw potential in Qualcomm for a dip buy. I personally missed it. Uh, this was Friday and Thursday, I believe, if we look on the five day, five minute. We got the pop pull down. Um, but now, now that we got this pull down, guys, this is giving me an opportunity to get in tomorrow if this 90-91 level holds. And if we go back to that four-hour chart, that 90-91 level is putting us on that 50 SMA. But one thing that's a bit unattractive, though, I'll be honest, guys, now that I'm looking at this more in depth, you know, Qualcomm, this could be a double top on Qualcomm, right? You know, we got a top at about 94, um, another top at about 94 so. 
Ah, you know, that's that's kind of bearish, especially if we break that 50 SMA, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think I think there's a lot of momentum upwards still because they crushed earnings, crushed EPS, crushed revenue. I, I feel like the momentum's to, on their side to the upside now. So ultimately, I do think they'll, they'll, they'll find, uh, you know, some form of bottom here and then they'll, they'll break up. I'm just waiting for that to take the position. Disney's in a similar scenario as Qualcomm right now, guys, believe it or not. You know, we have a lot of momentum to the upside. We got news that the, the day after, one day into Disney Plus's launch, there were 10 million subscriptions, 10 million signups, which was great. That was a catalyst running up the stock like crazy. We had a good earnings report. I believe they missed on revenue very slightly, but the investors in the market, traders, they didn't care. They beat on EPS, which was good, and that flung the stock up like crazy. And again, that's the momentum um, right now. That's why there's momentum right now pretty much in Disney. We hit 150, which if we go on the three-year chart, you can see that's an all-time high, and we're breaking above that 148, I believe, resistance, 146 resistance that we actually, uh, you know, peaked out at, at, at a couple of months ago. And, you know, now we're, we're, we're selling off and we're looking to hold 145 as a new support, which again is that old resistance. So I see a dip opportunity here. Um, excuse me, guys, in Disney, which again is a stock that has momentum on its side here. Um, so about 4%. Um, from about the 150 peak down to about 145 and just keep an eye on this pre-market guys if we find some sort of bottom here and we start to break up like this that's going to be extremely extremely bullish for um, Disney here so Facebook is the last one that I do want to talk about here today guys and uh, let me just nah, there's no need to really delete that now at this point but Facebook you know if we go to the four hour chart and by the way this is another stock that I'm swing trading right now we look at this chart here if we zoom in especially on this action here this is looking extremely bullish to me right you know it seems like we found a bottom at 173 back in the beginning of October since then we've been making higher highs higher lows breaking moving averages and now we broke above 192 which historically speaking here on the four hour chart that's been a sticking point for Facebook over these past couple of months really stemming back to believe it or not guys April right we actually broke above 192 very briefly for about a month but ultimately since April other than that one month stint that we were up above 192 we've been struggling at that level so now that we're breaking above it again I think there's potential that this thing can definitely run up to 204 205 and if it breaks 198 guys I think that's a straight shot to that 205 um, level, which again is why I'm holding shares of Facebook right now in my swing account. So overall, guys, um, that's kind of the breakdown. Stocks, ETFs, I'm watching, you know, you guys, D gas, natural gas, and all of the other ones, and kind of some that I'm holding right now. If you guys enjoyed the video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me. And if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community, Facebook. Facebook link is down below. The Discord group chat link is down below as well. And if you want to buy some Six Drive Smart merch, that is linked down below in the description as well. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.